right, it's uh, three o'clock. We'll call the Stephen County Board of Commissioners uh, for board meetings uh, to order. And um, the invitation will be by Charles May. Let us pray. Dear God, we just come to you today and we want to thank you for the blessing of waking up this morning and being able to see another bright sunny day. And we just want to thank you for all the blessings that you bestow upon us for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and the food, clothing, and shelter. God, and we just ask that you continue to look over those who watch over us and bless our soldiers that are in the armed forces. And Lord, you continue to bless us here as a community, as a state, and as a nation, that we will continue to seek your face and let you lead us in everything that we do. We just ask that you bless us this day. Give us a mind to deliberate in peace and in justice for all the citizens in this community, and that everything we do we give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Um, Commissioner Brown? Here. Commissioner Sear? Here. Commissioner Hubby Wright? Here. Commissioner Hughes? Here. Commissioner Larry? Here. Vice Chair Nash? Here. Commissioner Pago? Here. Commissioner Chairman Skolnick? Here. Commissioner Wilkins? Here. Nine present. Okay. The next item is the approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. Uh, I have a motion by Mr. Nash, second by uh, Commissioner Kevin Wright. Are there any corrections or comments on the agenda? If not, we'll do a voice vote on that. Um, all those in favor say aye. Opposed, the same time. The agenda is approved. The next item is the approval of the regular and full session minutes of July 27th. 2021, and I do have one correction on the closed session meeting. There was a comment. Um, no, I don't know. think you should be reading it. I'm not going to read it. I just don't. There was a change in the uh, name of the person that made the statement. <coughs> so this Commissioner Hubby Wright actually was Commissioner Hughes. So other than that, um, I will make the uh, motion to approve the regular and full session minutes with the change. Support. Support. Okay. So, <clears throat> so we're now, um, are there any other comments on that? So we, we, Was that at the bottom of yes. um, yeah. page 18? Yes. Okay. If not, if not um, we'll do a voice vote on that too. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Um, and same Next is public comment on the agenda item. Does anyone have public comment on the agenda item? Is there anyone on the screen? I can't see. And I don't see anybody coming forward, so we'll move on. The next item is committee and board reports. Um, the first would be reports and public safety. Chair, that is, uh, okay, the Courts and Public Safety Committee met on August 3rd, 2021. It was recommended, and I moved CPS 21 slash 08 dash 43 through CPS 21 dash 08 dash 47. Support. Okay. Um, are there any comments or anything on any of those? If not, Linda, why don't we do a roll call vote? Commissioner Brown? Yes, on all. Commissioner Sear? Yes, on all. Commissioner Hubby Wright? Yes, on all. Commissioner Hughes? Yes, on all. Commissioner Larry? Yes, on all. Vice Chair Nash? Yes, on all. Commissioner Pago? Yes, on all. 
Commissioner Wilkins? Yes, on all. Chairman Skolnick? Yes. yes. Nine yes on all. Uh, Mr. Chair, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next uh, committee report is Human Services and Commissioner Hubby Wright is the chair of that committee. Yes, uh, the Human Services Committee met on August 3rd, 2021, and it was recommended and I move uh, uh, sections uh, HS 21 slash 8 16 through 21. Support. All right. So, second? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, is there any discussion? Okay, let's uh, move for a vote, please. This is full board. Yeah. I'm sorry, were you asking to speak? No, I, it's just normally I would do that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Is this a pool? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> you can arrange that if you want. I'm pretty sure all of this. Um, Okay, so we had a motion that's been supported. Is there any, um, are there any comments, corrections, concerns on items 16 through 21? If not, when would the council roll for it? Commissioner Sear? Uh, yes on all. Commissioner Javi Wright? Yes on all. Commissioner Hughes? No on 16, yes on everything else. Commissioner Larry? Yes on all. Vice Chair Nash? Yes on all. Commissioner Pago? Um, no on 16. Um, yes on 17. Yes on 18. Yes on 19. Yes on 20. And yes on 21. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes on no. Chairman Skolnick? Yes on no. Seven yes, two no on 16. Nine yes and 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Thank you. Next committee report is Ways and Means and the Chair of the Committee is Commissioner C. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The Ways and Means Committee met on August 3rd, 2021. It was recommended and I move on WM 21 slash 08 77, 78, 79, and 80. Support that. Okay. Um, so we've uh, we have four motions. Are there any comments, corrections, concerns on any of those four? Okay, if not, when we roll call on those, please. Commissioner Hubby Wright? Yes on all. Commissioner Hughes? Yes on all. Commissioner Larry? Yes on all. Vice Chair Nash? Yes on all. Commissioner Pago? Yes on all. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes on all. That was me. Commissioner Bram? Oh, okay. okay. Commissioner Sear? Uh, yes on all. Chairman Skolnick? Yes on all. Nine yes on all. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Sear. Okay. Um, <laughs> we'll move on to the uh, Chairman's report and being liaison reports. Before I give my report, are there any liaison reports for any of the Groups that you're meeting with. Okay. Chairman's report first um, this weekend is Unity Christian Music Festival from August 11th to the 14th at Philly's Landing. Um, on August 14th from 8 to 10 a.m., um, you're invited to join the A 5K Run Walk, which takes you through downtown Muskegon. All paved, all flat. Um, 90 95% right hand turns, and it's all downhill. Um, <laughs> that's not true. The next item is the Great Lake Surf Festival 2021, which will be held on August 14th from 12.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. at Pier Marquette Beach. And um, finally, the, this is something unusual. Visitors can tour the cylindrical ironclad 48-foot-tall Muskegon South Purehead built in 1903. <clears throat> Climb two spiral staircases and a shipman's ladder to find unparalleled views from the lantern room, Fridays and Saturdays from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Fridays and Saturdays. All right, so that concludes my report. And now we have the administrative report. Mark. <coughs> 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, item A is really an informational item. It's our proclamation that we approved for Holton Township um, that Commissioner uh, Pagel uh, had some suggestions that we should add to make it uh, more in line with what they're celebrating. Um, so on the second page, page seven shows the highlights in yellow that was added. So I wanted to bring that back to our attention. Um, I felt the chairman felt that none of these items really changed the intent of the population. Um, therefore, um, this was held, I think, last Thursday. Saturday. Last Saturday. Um, so we went and moved forward with those changes and just bring it back to the board's attention. That was written very well. Mm -hmm. I had input from several different community members and leaders that wanted some additions made. So thank you. Thank you. So item B, um, it's difficult to read this because of the uh, past six years of working with this person. So um, I'll, I'll read through it here though. Move to approve the reclassification of finance director, assistant county administrator position. Why? 18001, A table grade NB00050, 5172-6473, to a finance director title at A grade NG00040-46, to 57.572, effective September 6, 2021. I'll make that motion. Go ahead. Okay, uh, we have that motion. Um, it's been supported. Uh, yes, um, so I understand that um, Mrs. Dick um, provided the description of two hats that she wore and two right. separate duties. And so I understand the decrease in the wage of the hourly and the savings um, that will happen annually, but what about that vacant position of assistant county administrator? Is that a position that will actually um, be an 11,000 to 13,000 a year annually position? What I would like to do is we're going to get this one posted and start moving on this one and then bring back that for discussion uh, for the board to decide whether a part-time, you know, the director, part-time director handle that or we go to a full time. Um, so I'll have both options to discuss with the board at a later time. And I'll also provide where the uh, dollars that would come help pay for such position. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Yes, Marsha. So um, the difference in pay depends on where we put them on the scale, but sure. would be approximately how much uh, we could apply to the 11,000 to 13, almost yeah, 14,000. Okay. Anybody else? If not, um, Linda, do we have a roll call on that? Please? Commissioner Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Laring? Yes. Vice Chair Nash? Yes. Commissioner Pago? Yes. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Steer? Yes. Commissioner Hubby Wright? Yes. Chair Skolnick? Yes. Nine yes. Okay, thank you. We, we do have one more board meeting, so before I say our goodbyes, our finance director will say that. You have to show up the next <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, see here. To approve the creation of temporary senior fiscal analyst position effective August 16th, 2021 through August 29th, 2021. To joint Justin to appoint Justin Robillard to the position of pay grade NX-00294 step one at 2571. So support. All right. Um, we have the motion. It's been um, moved and supported. Um, you want to talk about that? Right? Yes, and I'll probably ask the finance director to come up and do an introduction as well. The lights and places. Subject director of finance. Um, yes, this is a request in order to try to streamline. Um, some of the changes that are happening in the accounting department, um, not only will I be leaving, but also our accounting manager, Dwight Avery, is retiring at the end of August. 
And Angela Gashevsky is right here in the audience here. She's gonna be moving into the accounting manager role uh, upon his retirement. Uh, we did post her current position, which is a senior fiscal analyst uh, within the county. We had an applicant from the treasurer's office that is highly qualified and will be moving over into that role. And if we could get him into that position a couple weeks sooner than um, normally the way it would have to work, we would have to wait till Dwight retires and Angie moves over. Um, it would be greatly helpful to the department. We've got, also got some staff out on medical leave and kind of stretched right now for staffing. So um, we do have savings from the fact that Dwight is retiring a month prior to the end of the fiscal year. So there's some savings from that that will help offset this cost. Any questions? Yes. So is Justin, the gentleman from the treasurer's office, yes. moving over then? Yes. But he's not here. No, not, so not that's, in the office. But Angie's But here. he's going to stay. Here, yeah. Oh, I can see her now. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. And she's going to move into Dwight's position. That is correct. Okay. Yep. Are you done, Melinda? Or did you have more? Still? I think so. I'm, I'm just trying to understand why he's moving there anywhere. You're just wanting to do it sooner. Normally, you can't have two people occupy the same position. Okay. At so the that's same why time. the date is specified. Yeah. Right. Okay. Gotcha. So it's just creating a temporary position to allow him to come over a couple and then weeks early, and then it'll go away. And he'll become the permanent. Yes. Okay. Thank you. We've only done this once or twice before, and it's really helpful. Sure. Especially oh, yeah. Like so they can cross train. Yes. Yes. Oh, and it's budget time. Yeah. It is. It's really <laughs> yes. Busy. It's very busy. And like yeah. I said, we have short staff. We have so is his out. position filled then? Uh, in the treasurer's office, I know they've posted it. I don't know that they've filled, you know, found an app, applicant that they're um, going to fill it with okay. yet. I'm not sure. But we did talk to Mark, talk to the treasurer about it, and he said he was okay with it. He just had to commit to do the dump tank the next time he'll come. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think it was well, someone else. Mark is off the hook. Right. Right. <laughs> I just said I know someone else we can sign up for that too. You yeah, should you, not me. <laughs> <laughs> you're wondering. All right. Um, that's it, Beth. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, you get a lot of money on that. I'm sorry. Right. Commissioner Lay, right? Position. Yes. Vice Chair Nash? Yes. Commissioner Pago? Yes. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Sear? Yes. Commissioner Hubby Wright? Yes. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. Chair Skolnick? Yes. Nine yes. Okay. So the last item, uh, D. <clears throat> Move to accept the FAA's airport coronavirus response grant program concession relief addendum offer addendum number 326-00710482021 in this case airport for $4,225 and to ratify the board's chair's digital signature. Grant will provide relief to airport concessionaries, including airport car rental and internal airport concession operators. So moved. Support. Okay, we've got a motion. It's been uh, it's been made and supported. Are there any questions about that? I'll just add one thing. I mean, the reason this this skip committee is because of the deadline of the grant. Mm -hmm. respond mm -hmm. accordingly. Anybody else? Anybody? Nobody. Um. Nobody's moving this. Linda, sorry. Two more. Vice Chair Nash. Yes. Commissioner Pago? Yes. Commissioner Wilkins? Yes. Commissioner Brown? Yes. Commissioner Sear? Yes. Commissioner Hobby Wright? Yes. Commissioner Hughes? Yes. Commissioner Laring? Yes. Chair Squillnick? Yes. Nine yes. Okay. Um, so that concludes uh, the first 10 items of business. The next is unfinished business uh, for the full board. I have no unfinished business. Is there any, anybody? Okay. Um, New business? Is there any new business to be brought before the board? Nobody's given me anything. All right. Um, next is public comment. I do have um, someone who's given me uh, a sheet for public comment. Linda Willinga. Okay. Right, thank you for the opportunity to address the board. Um, I recently served on a jury in Judge Hicks's court. And um, there were a few things about the, the facility, the physical aspects of things that I thought should be brought to the attention of the commission. 
um, I, we were on a murder trial. It lasted a week, so we spent a lot of time in the juror room. The juror room, if you've never been in it, I don't know what the other programs are like, but in this one is very, very small. And, um, and um, it was very hot also. The sun beats into that room in the afternoon and it really gets warm and the air conditioning does not begin to deal with it. Um, there's a table that maybe 10 people can sit at. There were 13 of us in there. We couldn't even sit around the table. So it's, it, there's some need for some, something to be done about that situation. Um, I guess that's you know, up to you. The other thing that, that I felt was of concern is that it was really impossible for the jurors to hear the, um, the recordings that we, were presented to us or to see the videos that were presented to us. And so part of the time of deliberation we had to spend going back through all of that because we couldn't see or hear it when we were sitting in the juror seats. So those were my two main concerns. I'm hoping that that's a, a court that has yet to be renovated and there are some things that really need to be addressed there. Well, what, what floor was that on? It's on the sixth floor. That, that's, we've been talking about remodeling that floor for quite a while. It's going to have to be, it's on our list of things that we use. Move it up <laughs> if you can. Because it was, um, you know, it's a, it was a very interesting experience for me. It was interesting to watch the number of people who talk their way off of the jury who don't want to have jury duty. So <laughs> for those of us that were there that didn't try and get out of our civic responsibilities, it needs to be a better situation for people serving on the jury. Well, sure. Thank you for your service. Okay. I know people do try to get out of it. Somebody, it's important you do it. I would also like to say that Judge Hicks and his staff did everything I think that they were capable of doing to try and make us comfortable. It wasn't that they were um, ignorant of our situation or unsympathetic, but there wasn't a whole lot that could be done. So I just love that too. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for listening. All right. Um, is Kathy Moore in here? Kathy, would you like to give us a little update? Yes, and I'll try to make this oh, about two minutes as well. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Kathy Moore, Public Health Director. I'd just like to try to share with the commissioners uh, information that I'm also sharing in the community. Um, these are the uh, current COVID-19 stats for Muskegon County. And uh, some of the other information I shared with the community is that, you know, sometimes Muskegon County gets a bad rap. And um, when the CDC initially uh, put us in the, I don't know, extremely high category, um, that was as a result of a past data dump from a company called Selected Laboratory. Uh, they dumped data from October 2020 and November 2020 on August 2nd. And that, that moved us um, there. The, uh, the by time, um, uh, the state of Michigan issued a press release that it was an outbreak. It would not be considered an outbreak uh, in our normal definition. Um, this was a outside event over a four day period with 100,000 participants, 16 cases. We could not even say they were in the same place at the same time, but 16 cases over a really broad geographical area. Had it been a like a wedding reception on the same day at, in, a, in a close amount of time, 400 people, then 16 cases, yes, um, an outbreak. Um, we just got another bad rep. Um, we were, that, that is very indicative of community spread. The, I don't know if you guys heard um, of an outbreak at the Forenthal, um, again, this, uh, there is a, a family that traveled from Genesee County in the same car for two and a half hours to the event, and then they traveled back. Uh, they did identify um, a event at the Parenthal as the common place they were, but they were also in that car um, for five hours. And the um, possibility of exposure is actually greater um, in that confined area than it, than it is the Parenthal. So that would be another, a uh, bad rep from Muskegon County. So I just wanted to share that information. Um, also, the CDC includes um, inmate cases uh, of our two prisons. Uh, not all counties have prisons. Um, 
but you know, CDC is really huge and um, we really can't get those numbers adjusted. But with the state of Michigan, uh, they do work with us and at least say they're gonna change it. Um, so just really, really briefly, these are these are our numbers. Um, Muskegon County would be considered today. Last week we were actually better than what was reported. Today we would be considered risk level C. But if you look at that, that is on average 10.7 cases per day. Very manageable here uh, with public health. Uh, one of the reasons we take a lot of precaution is because we don't want to overwhelm the hospitals. I should have put page numbers on this, I'm sorry. If you look at the hospital beds, um, the greater, the Grand Rapids region, 1.75% of beds are occupied by COVID patients compared to 1.8% statewide. But then if you look at the bottom chart, um, less than 10 individuals have been in uh, the Mercy County Hospital over the last 10 days. So we're, we're still really good right there as well. Um, we have uh, no deaths reported in the month of August and July, uh, only three deaths. Um, the number of Delta variant cases, uh, 10 confirmed, three suspected or three probable because they are relatives. Um, zero of those cases hospitalized, two cases within the same household, six females, four males, um, Four of the cases were symptomatic, but zero of the cases were severe symptomatic. And the COVID status is unknown because we do, um, we ask, but we don't pressure. Um, then the vaccine breakthrough cases, we recorded 192 vaccine breakthrough cases with 21 probable. Again, because these are, um, individuals who exhibited symptoms but did not get tested, but they live in the same household. And then um, of that, um, six died, and, and two of the six were the B117, but zero Delta again. So that is my really quick update. What, what do you mean vaccine breakthrough? Can you explain? Uh, that is a um, CDC term for individuals who were fully vaccinated and then subsequently diagnosed with COVID-19. And six of them died? Yes. Six, six of our um, residents that we have record of, six of the 213 or six of the 192. They died after they got the vaccine? They got COVID and died after the vaccine? Is that what that means? Yes. Do you have um, deaths of after the shot from Stephen County total? This, this, is, this is the data that we have. So this is what was reported. Concurrent from January to now, is that what you mean? Yes. So there's been over 12,000 deaths um, up to July 30th that the CDC has um, specifically from the COVID shot, over 400,000 injuries. And so we're not, um, we're, we don't get the information like the CDC bars, but um, they do report to the state and, and then that's how we get the information. Kathy, thank you for sharing that. I know there was, as you mentioned, bad gap for Muskegon, a lot of miscommunication. And, uh, it out and so thank you for that. I, I hope we can share some of this information with, with others and get this information off of the absolutely and so I do try to share um you know with community uh agencies and coalitions at their request so we, we try really hard to make ourselves available and, and to share the true data yes so on the other side of the point how many of the unvaccinated uh deaths were there? The um, that would be if you if you consider that COVID related that would be the number uh, three hundred and sixty five from the beginning of March twenty twenty to present. Unvaccinated and sixteen vaccinated. That's just the total deaths. She said. Yes, that's the total related COVID related deaths. Oh, okay. And you don't report whether they're vaccinated or unvaccinated. We do not, because so then if you take the if you take the 365 and you see that there are six um, breakthrough cases, then you would deduct that six, and it would be um, 359. Were the uh, breakthrough cases uh, counted at the same time frame that these are from the same? They, they are because these are, uh, this is data related to individuals who were diagnosed with COVID-19. 
So the, the 365 deaths are individuals diagnosed with COVID-19. Those six um, were fully vaccinated and subsequently diagnosed with COVID-19 and died. Were we testing from the same time? No, because because vaccinations um, you know started much later, and um, I I don't know when they started tracking um, breakthrough cases and deaths. I can't I can't say for sure. Okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'd just like to comment. Uh, it says viruses constantly change through mutation and new variants of a virus are expected to occur over time. Delta is believed to be the most transmissible variant yet. Uh, it's my understanding that it becomes more transmissible as it mutates. That's part of what a virus does, I understand. Uh, and it says it may cause more severe illness. I, I thought I had certain uh, heard several articles that I, I read that said that as it mutates and becomes more transmissible, it becomes less severe. That that has been that has been our experience, and so but this is this is the initial uh, CDC's um, definition, and I think they have subsequently, you know, maybe adjusted that those words. But oh, it, yeah. oh, it does say although more research is needed. So. Yeah. Thank you. Anyway. How are you testing for the variants? The, um, the specimens are collected uh, at the time of testing. And then if it is a positive for COVID-19, uh, it is actually randomly selected or it could be specially requested um, and sent to the Michigan Bureau of Laboratories. So then they sequence it, just looking for that specific sequence of Delta or any of the variants. Is that still the PCR test that you're sending in? Or yes, not? only, only. And so um, part of our positivity rate, again, is skewed because there are, uh, most people prefer the rapid antigen test. And then they also, you can buy a test um, on the corner store now. Well, no, maybe at a at pharmacy, at a drugstore. And uh, we don't necessarily get those results either. Okay, anybody else? It's not Kathy, thank you very thank much. You. Thank, thank you, Kathy. All right, final board comments. May I? Mr. Sear? I have a, uh, I don't know if this is pertinent to this board, but I have a, uh, a constituent up on uh, Silver Creek Road that uh, their road has recently been repaved. And uh, he was, uh, like glowing uh, comments about the uh, the quality of the work on the road. He said that it's been repaved and repaired several times before, but they didn't really do. He said, whoever's working the engineer on this job that, that repaired that road he wants to give him kudos because uh, I mean, they've got runoff now where uh, the water's not going to eat away at the road. He said they just did a really good job. So just a comment. Is that the road road? Road? It would be the road. Yeah, Paul, Paul Bowman is the one that does the engineering for this. So I'll let him know. I'll yeah, let him know because he well. was he was impressed. Don't tell Ken Paul. No, but <laughs> 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 you want to say this? All right, anybody else? Um, okay, uh, I'm going to adjourn the meeting here, but we're going to take a five minute break and then come back for the uh, work, session. work session. Work session. Work session. We want the motion. So the meeting is adjourned.